So what, what do you use, Brad, for calibrating, for, for checking your calibration? So what I use is the um, calibrator uh, tennis head. 2200 yeah. which, which which looks like uh yeah looks like this right and then you have to put a string on both ends and then that's what you put on your clamp and then you pull it the diablo right. exactly and and i need to get stronger strings i've got a polyester here and sometimes it snaps i need to order some kevlar but yeah. what i did today because one of the pulls is 88 pounds it pulls so today I put some tubing. It's probably hard to see, but there's tubing. Yeah, I see the tubing. And then I just put the string through the tubing, and that helps protect it because, you know, it's it's a, it's, it's a round piece of metal. It's not yeah. hard to cut through the string there. So I would yeah, recommend. I, I think. I think right, and I think Herb, you know, Herb, who we, who who we've had on the channel a few times as well, um, he he says that he's actually had one of these metal clips break on him. Oh. Um, it actually had break and came apart, so he he figured out a way to to secure it a little bit better, weld it, or put a new piece on, or whatever. But um, yeah, I mean, because we, we're pulling them at pretty tight tensions, right? Because you said um, on yours, 88 yeah, pounds. 88, 88 pounds, because you're you're doing it at different tensions to make sure it's accurate at all different tensions and so forth. I mean, it's a great it's a great machine in the sense that you know it's electronic and it it's it's a pretty standard one. Um, uh, yeah, I would definitely Kevlar. Um, I haven't used because I just recently got this. I wanted to uh, get some Kevlar strings because polyester strings, you know, maybe after you pull it five or six times, a lot of the elasticity is probably out of the string and it's not going to pull a whole lot more. But just to keep that part out of it, I don't want to have any uh, the string move. And so Kevlar is the best, I think, for uh, not not being, you know, moving yeah. and, and contributing to the maybe the the variance. Yeah, and whatever you, whatever I do, and I'll have to ask Herb, and I'll have to ask you when you do this. Whenever I use this, it just automatically seems to turn upside down on me. So I have to get down in a squat position to read the, <laughs> the poundage. But one one thing to remember is when you set this up on the clamp and put a starting clamp behind it, and then put it through the um, Diablo and through the, the tension head. Um, remember to reset it back to zero because sometimes just setting that up will add some poundage on there. So click the button to make sure it says zero before you hit the tensioner. Um, so that that that's a, a good thing to remember. Oh, yeah. Good point. And and why and or how often do you use that little device there? I mean, how often do you uh, check your calibration? Probably not often enough, but I, I try to remember it every 50 to 100 rackets or so um, just to get in there. This machine, from what I've read, does a great job, and it was it was within a pound on every single one today, except the 88 pounds was like eight, one and a half pounds off. And the no, way so that's, you, like every day. that's like every day for you, huh? You're stringing about 100 yeah. rackets. <laughs> that's Herb. Uh -huh, that's yeah. Herb. That's not me. Know. Yeah, no, I'm if I'm if I'm one and a half a day, you know, that that's yeah. good. And I, and I think if you move your machine, if you if you're moving your machine around a lot or you're, uh, you know, fidgeting with it a lot or things like that, that it might also be a good time just to check it. You know, maybe just get in the habit of maybe, uh, you know, once a month or something at the beginning of the month, just check the calibration of it. It just takes a few minutes. I know it just keeps things, I think, clean that way. And, and, and you don't start losing a little bit of tension. And then, you know, you're stringing rackets along the way. And then it starts to like all of a sudden yeah. one day you're like, wow, I'm four pounds off. Yeah. You know, well, one thing, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry. One thing um, that 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 helps me stay in check is that I have a lot of the same clients. And every time I pull a racket off the machine after I string it, I have a an app that listens to the pitch and the harmonics, mm -hmm. and it gives me the dynamic tension reading. So I, I know that if that was going to be a couple pounds off of previous rackets that I've done, that would make me immediately go to check the tension calibration on the yeah. machine. So, but but it is a good idea. And one thing I, you know, I, I had a slight period of frustration today for about a minute. Because when I was trying to lock the base clamp after putting the string from the calibration head a tuner into the cl the clamp, it the base wouldn't lock. It wouldn't hold. It, it wouldn't click. And so I, you know, I I started getting a little like I'm I'm trying to like what's going on here. I'm like what am I am I missing a step here? And then I realized when you string a racket, you have to pull the the clamp up but like an inch or two. And so 
once I pulled it up, then it clicked, you know, so you got to remember to pull it up a little bit. Yeah. 